Great. <clears throat> hey guys, uh, welcome um, to ITS 350. So we should be recording. Yeah, we are. Okay. All right, great. So welcome to ITS 350. Um, so today's our first day, right? So we're going to start today. The, the goal on the agenda, we're just going to go over the syllabus. <clears throat> we're going to go over um, you know, the software that we'll be using, the programs, and then I'll kind of motivate you know, the topics, basically, and uh, what the, this course is about. Uh, and then I'll just show you the resources, basically, where everything is. <clears throat> so yeah, so we'll start. So hopefully we're all in the correct room. This should be ITS 350, Fundamentals of Cryptography. Okay, so let's, we can click on Brightspace. So Brightspace will be your main resource for everything. So I'll post the materials usually on here under content. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, so these are the topics basically. So this is a cryptography class. Uh, it's, it's part of your cybersecurity uh, curriculum. So I assume most of you are cybersecurity students. Um, and so, yeah, so that that's the whole semester. We'll be covering these topics. Um, I like this class. I mean, I've had students describe it as doing puzzles. <laughs> so so it's kind of like that, actually. So we'll go over, um, you know, all the topics, basically. Um, you know, the class builds on, you know, you have like the pillars and then you have like uh, the building blocks that allow you to, you know, build ever more complex uh, cryptographic, uh, you know, techniques. So we will do that, um, you know, this, this semester. All right. So, uh, basically, um, this is, everything is here in this one page, All right? These are all the modules it continues. And I always add a little bit more to it. Pretty much everything we cover will be related to, uh, cryptography and encryption, basically. And as you know, encryption <clears throat> is incredibly important, right? So, to you know, cybersecurity. It's one of the key things is mainly used for defense, right? Uh, to protect your data and everything. So we're gonna take a look at, you know, try to motivate today a little bit of how that works. And then we'll start looking at all the different techniques. Um, and then basically sometimes we wanna break, you know, the, the ciphers, right? So we'll also look at that. You know, how would we go ahead and, and break some of these techniques? All right, so uh, I'll go over the, so here I'll, I'll describe the modules a little bit. So I, the first three are usually resources. So the first one uh, is gonna talk about the end of semester surveys. I usually put the, the project here, the project description. Um, and then here I have my admin module, which is usually where I have the syllabus. So I'll go over the syllabus in a little bit. Uh, then I have some resources, so I usually supplement with resources. So obviously, you know, we're going to, you know, cryptography is about algorithms, okay? It's a, it's a algorithmic kind of a thing. Now, this is not a programming course, so I'm not going to be teaching you programming, right? Or expect you to, you know, per se, uh, create uh, algorithms, but you are required to read, right? So you should be able to read code, the code will be in Python, which is probably one of the easiest languages that you can look at. So <clears throat> I provide the code for you. I, I generally don't ask you uh, to write code from scratch in this course because the focus is just under understanding the algorithms themselves, like the techniques. How do we actually do cryptography? But you will be required to read and to modify code every now and then. <laughs> okay. So, you know, that's basically the objective. And also we will supplement... Uh, with uh, some um, <clears throat> programs that are available that we can use. OpenSSL, for instance, is one of them that we will use in Linux, okay? So that's the other thing. Uh, the virtual machine that we will be using is Linux. Uh, so, you know, if you've used the CBM, for instance, then that's perfectly fine. Or Kali Linux, if you use that in 250, similar idea, Okay. The, so I, I will I will describe all of that. Actually, I have some of the materials here. 
Your first homework assignment will be basically to get VirtualBox installed on your computer and uh, just you know create your seed VM. Okay, and that just makes it easy because if you create the seed VM, then a lot of the programs are already there, so it'll make your life easier, basically. That's all you need this semester, right? So VirtualBox and the seed VM, everything will be done there. Um, and it should be, you know, pretty straightforward. So I, I provide, I usually provide this Word document here. It just gives you some background on Python. So if you don't remember, it's kind of, you know, it, you know, it's not the most modern of versions, but you can just take a look at it just to remind yourself of some of the Python commands. Um, and then you can just ask me if you have any issues. Uh, I usually record the lectures and labs. So I'll try to be good about that. Um, I'm recording this one and I'll try to do that uh, whenever I can, you know, every class basically. And I just post them on YouTube so you can get with you. Uh, the code is usually on, on this link. You can go to my, the, I have a repo on GitHub and I usually just upload the code there. So the code will be there, um, you know, so you don't have to like really quickly take notes in class or anything like that. Instead, just pay attention to what I'm saying. You can also look at the videos again and you know grab the code from the github so they'll be there okay so as i said the 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 whole semester we're just looking at algorithms you know all the different techniques how do we do encryption basically well there's no real math you know we do sometimes use symbols math symbols to represent some of the algorithms efficiently so yeah you'll you'll see that did everyone sign in? Guys, I have to do this for the initial course participation. So make sure you sign in. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. Yeah. So I'll click on this. So this is basically the GitHub. So you can see here I have, you know, some notes and then basically all the different things that we will cover, block ciphers, classical some code basics, uh, cryptographic applications, PyCryptodome, which is a library in Python, and then some specific, you know, XOR hash techniques, stream ciphers, RSA, et cetera, right? So different algorithms, okay? So sometimes we'll be doing some things that are related, they're code heavy, and sometimes it's just going to be commands on Linux. So if you're familiar with that approach, okay? So yeah, so this is one of the resources. You can take a look at that. Okay, um, the seed labs, we'll be using some of the seed labs also. Uh, hopefully you've seen, you've used these in other classes before. We'll be using Ubuntu 2004 should still be, uh, you know, heavily used. And then we'll basically focus on some of these, the, you know, cryptographic labs. Okay, so we'll go over some of these. Um, and, you know, I'll describe them. Actually, this week we'll start, I think, with secret key encryption. Take a look at that. All right. And then uh, this is, you should click on this link. Basically, the what your first assignment, as I said, is going to be to install VirtualBox on your um, laptop, your computer. And then follow these instructions so that you can create your virtual machine. Okay, so you'll have to download the image basically, then follow all these instructions. And hopefully at the end of the process, you have a, a nice uh, clean virtual machine. Um, and that's going to be for Seed Ubuntu 2004. And that should have a lot. Oh, yeah, guys. Does it have three virtual box? <clears throat> As opposed to one. I, like, I used to have a workstation for free. Do you have it? You have the you have a license for it and everything. It's for non-commercial purposes. It's for okay, then use that. Okay. You can use you know it, it, as long as you use the VM. Yeah. You can use any program. the we, The reason why we recommend VirtualBox is that way we don't have to have a license for the lab here, so it's free, and that's kind of what everyone is doing. Okay. So yeah, and I I have VirtualBox and my demos are going to be using VirtualBox and the VM. Okay. But good question. So anyway, so this is your first homework assignment. Just please, you know, do this, try to have this. I would recommend by Thursday, because on Thursday, I'll probably start doing the first set of demos and I'll start giving you the first set of problems, right? 
just showing you how encryption works. Um, most of the encryption that we're doing is modern encryption. So none of the classical encryption, right? So none of the, like what you see in the movies or the Enigma machine or anything like that, that's more classical stuff. Um, and so, although it's exciting in a movie, right? It's, it can be broken easily. So nowadays, so that's, you know, nobody would use that. So those are fun things, um, you know, but you know, I will skip all of them. And so we'll just start with all the modern techniques, you know, I'll motivate who, uh, you know, what, you know, started to create a framework that was very solid for cryptography, you know, and, and founded it in a good way. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that. At the end of the semester, we actually look at how to break uh, some of these algorithms we know you know and, and so it's it's difficult they're actually very difficult to break unless you have like some inside knowledge or it was badly implemented or if you had a quantum computer for instance like that you know but otherwise these algorithms are very difficult to break right when they're meant to be that way or it would take 10,000 years to break them so a long time okay all right, so yeah, so that's the 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 resources basically. So again, um, you can come here to look at the videos. I will post a video usually today or the you know tomorrow, um, and then all the code should be here. But every now and then I do create new labs or I I add new new examples. So I will be loading those on the GitHub basically. All right, so let's go back to content. Okay, so that's resources. I'll, I'll go over the syllabus in a second. And then I'll just point out this one, secret key encryption is the first module for this week. I don't use things like week one, week two, week three. Instead, I go by topic. So, but I usually follow this order. Okay, so we'll do secret key en encryption. We will do this one, Python substitution cipher. This is actually a classical example, but it's just meant to show you that, you, you know, that, even a classical example can be very complex to implement. So it's not, you know, it's easy to break, but difficult to implement, right? Because it, it's a lot of strange logic and, and things like that. So we'll take a look at that. And that also, I also use this example to kind of get everyone, uh, if you haven't used Python in a while, right? To, it's kind of a Python practice example where I go over a little bit of, um, you know, how to code in Python and, and I'll spend some time on this one. After that, you know, we'll start looking at more uh, realistic uh, encryption algorithms. We'll look at the XOR operation, which is fundamental to cryptography. And then we'll start looking at hash functions, um, you know, and, and, you know, various things. Okay. Building up. Okay. So we will need to have some background, right? So no, we need a starting point with cryptography. All right, and I do have a set of slides for that that kind of motivates, you know, how we can start to look at cryptography. What are we trying to do, right? What is the goal, basically? And what are the goals of cryptography? What are the things that we are trying to accomplish with cryptography? That I have in <clears throat> this motivation, basically, I have in this set of slides. So that's where I'm going to start today. And then I'll show you a little bit of how the labs are going to work and everything like that. All right, so now let's just go over the um, syllabus real quick. <clears throat> okay. All right. So this is the uh, syllabus. So this is ITS 350, uh, Fundamentals of Cryptography. I'm Professor Calix. Uh, my, I'm in uh, Anderson 238. Okay. So the class meets uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, four to six. And office hours are going to be actually two to four. So the two hours before this on Tuesdays and Thursdays in my office. No book is required for this class. I will bet if you pay attention and everything, you know, I provide all the material. So you don't have to buy a book. If you do want a book, though, you know, any of the books by Wen Liang Du, which, you know, match the seed labs, you know, are, are, are useful. They're, they're great books. So if you're, you like to read, you know, before the lecture or things like that, you can get that book. He's got several computer security, internet security. Just make sure that before you buy it, if you want to buy it, that you search for the, that it covers the cryptography topics. Okay. Because, you know, one will cover them and the other doesn't. Okay. So just check for that. So they will, they will be in one, 
of the books, but you don't have to buy, okay? I will provide everything, plus all the materials that we have, the PDFs, et cetera, give a lot of background already, right? So a lot of the background of those PDFs was put into a book basically and with an additional explanation. All right, so, uh, so I will provide the notes and all the code examples will be on GitHub, et cetera. All right, so uh, course description, this course covers the implementation of systems assurance with computing systems and cryptography, right? So I'm sure we've all heard of cryptography. We all use cryptography every day, right? So you went on Brightspace cryptography, you wrote an email cryptography, you went on Amazon and bought something cryptography, you used your iPhone or whatever phone you have cryptography, right? So it's everywhere. We could not function, in fact, probably as a modern society without cryptography. So if someone was to break all these algorithms tomorrow, the economy is going to be in serious trouble, right? So we're going to have some serious problems. <clears throat> okay. And that's actually a fear. That's a fear that exists currently and that governments are, are worried about, you know, do they have a plan B in case somebody did break? So nobody knows. All right, so the topics include, and these are act, this is actually one of the ways that we're going to look at this uh, at this problem. And I'm sure you've already looked at cybersecurity problems from this point of view. You, you look at them from the point of view of these pillars, right? The pillars of information assurance, which are confidentiality, integrity, right? Um, authentication, and so on. So we will formally start to describe those. But topics include confidentiality, integrity, authentication, non-repudiation, um, intrusion detection, and encryption techniques, basically. All right, And then extensive laboratory, labor, laboratory exercises are assigned. So this class is, as you will see in the grading, there's a lot of homework in this class. I think it's like at least half of your grade is homework. So you'll get a homework assignment every week. Right. And it's going to be you'll have a week to finish it. I, what I usually do is I'll do like a little bit of lecture today and then I might start getting into the lab a little bit. And then on the and I'll do a demo. And then on uh, the Thursday, you know, I'll, I'll also try to demo as much as I can. But I usually do leave a few problems for you to solve. OK, so that will be the idea. OK, and, and at the end of the day, it's about, you know, I'll ask you things like, okay, right. A sentence now encrypted. Okay, that's basically, you know, and we're going to look at all the different techniques that we have available. So we talk about uh, these topics, confidentiality, instead of listing out, if you notice, the description of the course does not list out all the algorithms of encryption. So it doesn't say block ciphers and RSA and, you know, elliptic curves and things like that. Instead, it just says confidentiality. So what we, you know, what we want to do is achieve confidentiality. In, in the context of cryptography, we achieve it with algorithms, right? So uh, DES, you know, and RSA and so on, right? So we're going to see that some algorithms are better at certain tasks. Like we have some algorithms that will be good at confidentiality. Other algorithms are going to be good at integrity. Other algorithms are going to be used for authentication. Believe it or not, you know, we think of authentication as putting in a password, right? So that's usually how you authenticate or you have a key fob, right? Or biometrics or things like that. But cryptography is also used extensively for authentication, right? So, so we're going to take a look at how that works. Okay. So you've all heard of uh, fake news, right? So how do you know that, you know, President Biden or, or anyone when, when you see a video online and you see them talking, how do you know that it's really them and not maybe like AI generated Biden, right? So how do you know? So with cryptography, you could, right? Because then you could have, we're going to learn actually a technique that could be used so that whenever you see a video, you could look at it and say, okay, I need to look at the key of this, right? And if the, the key matches, then I know it actually came from President Biden and not someone else. So that's a way of uh, addressing fake news, for instance, right? So we're going to see that. We're going to see how whenever you go to Amazon to buy something, how do you know that that's Amazon and not somebody trying to steal your money or your identity, right? So that's basically the goal of this course, okay? So we want to understand these amazing algorithms, which are amazing, actually, and how they make, you know, how they provide all these 
uh, services for us? How do they help us to authenticate? How do they help us to have confidentiality? So confidentiality means what? That I send a message and nobody read it, right? So that's basically confidentiality. Integrity, we're going to look at that. What does that mean? It means that I sent a message and it wasn't modified by someone, right? Or we go online and you, you download some software to run on your computer and, you know, the integrity of it hasn't been affected. So no one has tampered with it. No one has tried to add like malware or something like that to the product, right? So, so that's basically what we will do all semester. So we'll start with authentication. Then we'll look at integrity. And then we'll get into authentication, which is a little bit more complex. Okay. And then we're going to combine all three to create a very powerful algorithm that can do every, all of it. Right. And so on. Non-repudiation just means that, you know, people can't deny that they did something. So for instance, like if I sign a contract, right, with someone, and then I want to say, no, it wasn't me to get out of it. You can't do it. There are ways that keep you from doing that as well. So <clears throat> that will be very important. And then we will look at how encryption can be used for other things as well, uh, like malware detection, right? So how do we detect malware with cryptography? Or how do we um, address, actually, we can use cryptography to address denial of service attacks. That's also, you know, so in cryptography is not just for like scrambling uh, attacks and hiding it. It can be used for a lot of things. Okay. And that's one of the things that we was explore in this class. All right, so uh, this goes over the learning outcomes. So you can take a look at it. It basically starts to talk about the different algorithms. <clears throat> so you can um, read through that. SSL, TLS, et cetera. We're gonna, you know, I always say to students, so, you know, what is SSL? And then some students raise their hand and they give me a definition. And then I, you know, I kind of like to say during the first or second week, I can't really define SSL right now. Sorry, we have to go through the whole semester or at least 10 weeks of the semester. And then by week 10, I will be able to define it in such a way that you actually understand SSL because there's a lot to it. OK, so that's kind of the idea. So you'll see me do this. I'll do this at some point in, in the slides. And then at, by week 10, I, I promise you, I will define SSL and everything will make sense because it's made up of things that are pretty complex. But once you break them down, it makes a lot of sense. It makes perfect sense. All right, so here's the grading uh, information. So as I said, there's a lot of labs. So that's 50% of your grade is homework, labs, and assignments. Um, you will have a term project. This is a 300 level class. So I usually, the projects in, in 300 level classes are small projects, mainly just for you to have you know fun with cryptography. So in the past, um, we've had students, for instance, that, you know, they wanted to break RSA and they used like, nowadays you, there's uh, a software that simulates quantum computers. So they kind of use that. So assume, you know, pretending that they have a quantum computer and then they try to break, you know, RSA or some algorithm. And they, that's, so that's the kind of project that you can do, you know, just, imp, you know, something related to cryptography that I didn't cover in class or usually breaking something. All right, so term term project will be 10% of your grade. This is usually a group project, okay? Exams, you'll have three exams. Each of them is worth 10% of your grade. So we'll have one exam at week six, one exam at week 12, and one exam during finals week. And then there's 10%, which is going to be basically like attendance, pop quizzes, that, and that's usually how I, except for the course participation, I don't take attendance for the rest of the semester, but you, there might be a pop quiz here and there. And I do do that a lot in this class, the pop quizzes. It's just the way the, the class is. You know, it, there's interesting little problems that you can for everything because cryptography is easy and then it can also get like a little bit confusing. So it makes it perfect for that. All right, uh, teamwork, professionalism, professionalism in the classroom. So really, if you come to class, you'll get this, right? So easy points, all right? The quizzes are, you know, don't get scared. Like if I gave you a pop quiz on Thursday, you know, as long as you try your best, you're going to do it, okay? They're not. Like now the exams, obviously, you have to study for them. <laughs> but the pop quizzes are more like in-class exercises. And as long as you don't leave the page blank, you should be fine. 
All right, um, so that's the grading. These are the university uh, reminders, so make sure you read through that. My biggest thing here is uh, homework, obviously. Uh, all homework needs to be submitted on Brightspace. Okay, so no homework via email, please. Okay. Also, don't you know? Don't expect that at week eight you can start sending me all the homework from <laughs> week one, week two. So please submit your assignments on Brightspace. I usually um, so you'll see on Thursday I'll assign a homework. It's gonna be due um, one week from Thursday. I call that the soft deadline, and then I have a hard deadline of Sunday. So you have like you, as long as you submit it by Sunday, you should be fine but you should try to submit it by Thursday. And you'll see how that works. It's just a thing I do um, so that students submit their homework on time. Okay, so I'll explain more of that. And, and I'm flexible for the first couple of weeks. So. All right, uh, but yeah, just basically try to submit your homework assignments on time, on Brainspeed. Case of an emergency, please read these instructions. This is also university provided information. So go through that. All right, this is the schedule for the most part. This is what I will do this semester. So today we're just doing introduction, motivation, overview of the syllabus. Uh, then we'll start getting the first, the very first topic is cryptographic tools. So OpenSSL, Python, right? So these are the main things that we will be looking at. Uh, and then the first topic is symmetric encryption, what is called block ciphers. And the thing that we're going to be addressing is uh, confidentiality, right? So you're going to, by this Tuesday, uh, oh, sorry, Thursday, you're going to encrypt an image, you're going to encrypt a text message, you know, and, and, and that. I usually, sometimes to understand cryptography well, you really have to work with a partner, okay? If you do everything on your computer, I've noticed that students don't miss some aspects of cryptography. What works really well is that you're working with someone because then you have to understand, okay, I need to send this message to them, but I need to, you know, when you encrypt, there's an algorithm and there's usually like a key, right? That's associated with that algorithm. So you have to understand that that key is a secret that you can't really share. So then it creates a, a, a problem to solve, right? How do you share this key? And so a lot actually of cryptography has to do with these keys, okay? And so that understanding how that works is better if you're working with a partner. So you'll see that. So some assignments, although you will be you will be working alone, you'll have to show evidence in your reports that you sent the information to your partner that you got, you know, the communication done right. Does that make sense? So yeah. So just keep that in mind if you want to work with someone, you know, just find someone to work with uh, for for those assignments, and I'll I'll specify clearly what you need to do. All right, so we'll do block ciphers, that's confidentiality. Then we will do integrity and you know what is called hash functions. So hash functions are generally the algorithm, the technique that you use for that. So in the beginning, I usually use OpenSSL to kind of demonstrate how these things work. And then we'll start looking at some of the basic algorithms for this, okay? So, yeah. All right, uh, symmetric encryption, public key cryptography. So that starts getting into using two keys. Uh, we have the RSA algorithm, which is one of the more important ones. Uh, an algorithm has been around for many years, um, since the 70s or 80s, so about 50 years. Okay, so and so we'll talk about that. We'll get into you know all the details, and we will actually even look at the code. Right. So you'll look, you'll, you know, we'll use libraries, but for the RSA algorithm, we'll look at the implementation of it in Python. So you'll get to see it exactly as it is. Okay. And I'll, I'll provide that. Cryptographic performance. Performance is actually really important to cryptography because uh, some of these algorithms take a lot of time to encrypt information. So think of the example of, you know, you go to, you know, go home and you turn on Netflix, right? And you want to watch a movie on Netflix. That movie is being sent over the internet, right? So there's copyright issues, et cetera. So the movie is encrypted. But when you press that button, you want that movie to start right away, right? You don't want to press the button and wait half an hour and then start seeing the movie. So, you know, that that's performance. And, you know, a cryptographic algorithm needs to be secure, but also fast. So that has to be worked 
into the equation, right? And so that leads to the operation that we use in cryptography called the XOR operation, which I'm sure you guys have already know what XOR is because you've done truth tables for programming and things like that. And you'll see that, you know, we'll start with that at some point, building up. So that's actually like the one of the most important um, math operations, if, if you will, the XOR operation. So we will be uh, a lot of cryptography because it needs to be fast needs to be done at the bitwise level, right? So bits, right? So uh, so we'll have to take, you know, text, convert it into numbers through the ASCII table, and then use that and convert it into bits and so on, and then performs the operations at the bit level, if that makes sense, through this XOR operation. So uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll look at that as well. So some of the examples might be, you know, some of the problems that I give you might be just computing uh, XOR operations, or we're going to use Python functions to convert things into XOR numbers and so on. Okay. So that's how we are going to, the goal here is to understand these algorithms really well. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about uh, SSL and then some of the applications of encryption for uh, malware, denial of service attacks um, and so on, where they, you can use them as well for those things. And we'll, we'll see how that works. We will talk a little bit about quantum computing. Not, I'm not gonna teach you how quantum computing works. This is not a physics class and I have no idea, all right? Um, we're just gonna think of if we had a quantum computer, what could we do in terms of cryptography, right? So we're gonna treat it as a black box. And that basically motivates the fact that, you know, Quantum, uh, sorry, uh, cryptography is trying to like hide things, right? And people are trying to find those things. So the, the way to find those things is to break into something, break the algorithm, break the key, right? And so that's what governments, you know, bad actors, hackers, they're all wishing they could do, right? So they, they want to break all these, um, you know, uh, get these keys and break into, I don't know, somewhere and, and steal some information of value, maybe like uh, patents or, you know, uh, blueprints, right? Blueprints to create technology, et cetera, right? So, you know, we all want to know how, you know, Tesla cars work and I'm sure they have some proprietary things, et cetera. All right. So anyway, so these are the topics. And so that, yeah, so it should be a nice, fun class. Um, you'll have written exams. You do have a practical exam. Um, sometime around week 12, around the second exam. And the practical exam is basically that I will, at that point, you know a lot of the cryptographic uh, techniques, right? So you know a lot of the techniques. So I like to hide a message. So I'll, I'll write something, right, sentence, and I will encrypt it many, 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 many times. And so, and I'll give you hints. And what you have to do is with your knowledge, you have to encrypt it, decrypt it, sorry, multiple times until you find the actual text, okay? And that's like a one hour lab, but it's the whole semester, you know, all the knowledge that we collect during the semester. Make sense? That's in real time, by the way. So it's not a home take home assignment. You have to do it in class. And students usually do it, so it's no big deal. All right? All right, so that's the syllabus. So let's go ahead. Are there any questions about anything so far? All right, so... Let's start with the slides and um, and then maybe I'll, I'll turn on the uh, virtual machine just to kind of show you the environment and everything, what you need to have for Thursday, right? And then on Thursday, I'll do the lab. So let's take a look here. So the first module should be here, secret key encryption. So I will go over these slides. This is the, these are the lab materials, by the way. Um, I have to make some changes here, but we can take a look. I just copied this from last semester, so I still need to make some changes. Right, so we will be doing these uh, problems basically. So usually this is what I do. I create a Word document, okay? I'll create a Word document or something and that's what you have to do, okay? I'll pay attention in class. I'll say, these are the five problems you have to do, okay? Because I may provide you other documents and there's more there, 
but I'm not asking you to do everything in those documents. That's just for you to read. And then, you know, you don't have to replicate everything. You just have to address the problems that I provide here. Okay. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do some, some of this uh, starting Thursday. So we're going to start encrypting things, right. And just basically use something called open SSL. I will demo how that works and show you, and we'll just encrypt some sentences or we'll create little text files basically usually and you'll put your text in there and we're going to call that the plain text file plain text that's like a cipher or a cryptography term the plain text right and then you're going to take that and convert it into the cipher text and that's going to be the encrypted version make sense so we'll be doing that with simple examples then we're going to, we're going to do a second example where we're going to encrypt an image so actually just any picture, it's a, I think it's a PNG file. Um, and we're just gonna encrypt it and look at it. Actually, we're gonna look at what it, what it, you know, basically what it looks like after we've done the encryption. Then we're gonna look at an example of something called padding. And that's basically, you know, block ciphers divide the data into blocks of fixed size. But, you know, we write paragraph sentences and they won't always have that fixed size, right? And so we're going to have to pad it at the end, add a few zeros, spaces, et cetera. We're going to look at another example. Uh, what if we corrupted the message, right? So you guys have taken your networking classes and you know you spent a lot of time learning that as you send information over the network, right, some things get corrupted, right? And so what happens when you have that kind of noise? What does that do to the algorithm or to the cipher when you try to decrypt it? Will it break the whole thing? Or you know, does it ruin the whole thing, or or can you still recover it, right? So we're going to look at that as well. And then, as you can see here, I have this work with a partner and send them a file via email. So usually, I do these kinds of problems so that you understand the the concept a little bit better. Does this make sense? So you'll have these these word documents are really what you should follow as far as the homework assignment. Okay. So I'll I'll go over this again on Thursday. But I'm just showing you right now <clears throat> how things should be. This is the image that we will use. So it's basically a circle and square. And we're going to try to encrypt that. And then there's another program, GHEX. This is actually should be on the seed VM. Again, make sure you have that VM working for Thursday. And the ASCII table is very important. Or we'll use this a little bit in this course. So if you hopefully you remember the ASCII table from one of your previous classes, and it's basically, you know, the 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 co code information, right? So we have characters, letters, and those letters can be converted into hexadecimal, decimal, et cetera. So why do we need this? As I explained, because usually we're encrypting things at the binary level, right? And so some of the times, you know, I may give you the data in hex. And you need to do certain things to convert it into uh, characters, or I may give you the data in decimal or in binary, et cetera. So you have to, you know, get used to that. But I'll show you the, the techniques that we can <clears throat> use for that, okay? All right, so that's that file. And then, yeah, here I, I usually also kind of duplicate whatever's in the Word document, you know, so I'll sometimes copy it here. You can see in a more summarized way, but it's the same idea. These are the homework assignments. So I'll create this. This, as I said, I just copied this from last semester. So I'll be updating these this week and start creating the new, uh, I'll create new links. So this one's closed and everything. I don't know that you guys can actually see these. You probably can't, right? So I can see it. All right. Um, and then now usually, the, the assignments will have some reading material and just like this one. So here I have a crypto encryption uh, PDF. So this is from the seed labs. And so you can, you know, read through these. So remember these PDFs that you don't have to solve everything in them, right? They're just for reading and what you should solve is what's on the Word document, okay? But it, they provide a lot of information because they have a lot of background. Sometimes they have, Python code examples, they have commands that you can use. So definitely read through them. They, they're going to help you out a lot. Make sense? 
Any questions so far? All right, so this is what we will do. So I that's basically all I wanna say today about these. Um, and then I'll demo each of these problems. We'll, you know, we'll read the problem, we'll think about it a little bit, we'll look at the PDF, and then I'll, on the VM, demo the information. Okay, so I think that's uh, good as far as um, showing you basically the first module for this week. So let's now go ahead and start with the slides. So I have a set of slides. I don't always do slides and I like to use my um, my pen whiteboard uh, for some of this, but I do have a set of slides for today, okay? <clears throat> okay, so let's open this one. All right, so here we are. Okay, okay, you can see that. Yeah. All right, so um, so this class is ITS three hundred and fifty. It, it it comes after ITS two hundred and fifty, right? So all of you, I assume, have taken two hundred and fifty. So I'm sure 250 covers many topics in cybersecurity. And so you've probably been introduced to some of these uh, terms and uh, some of the, even cryptography, right? So I'm sure some of it has been discussed. So here we just go into more detail about it. All right, so I the first half of these slides is just meant to be like a reminder of 250, so all the terminology. So I won't go over it. But just go, you know, what is computer security, all that you've covered in 250. So just go ahead and read through these. Um, you know, it's got all the basic information that you have seen. What is a countermeasure? All the different types of defenses that are available, right? Oh, that one's kind of small, but let's see. I don't like to create the, the big thing because then it breaks my Zoom. So let's see if I can just do this. Okay, you can see there's a lot of defenses here. Um, we have uh, intrusion detection systems. We have, uh, I think, forensics, biometrics, et cetera. So many security technologies that are, that are used. In this class, we basically just look at cryptography, right? So all semester cryptography. Even when we're looking at malware and you see we're actually looking at it from the point of view of cryptography, right? So what does cryptography do for that? OK, so so that's basically the whole idea so that we <clears throat> spend all semester uh, learning how how this works. All right. OK, and I can make this smaller. Now. So definitely please read through these slides if you don't remember the terminology, but I'm pretty sure it's things that have been covered in 250. Security policies. all. Of I usually start. Um, here. All right, so we're going to start here. So what is the cyber battlefield, right? So you want to think of, you know, cybersecurity as basically bad actors and good actors, right? And that's really, that's what cryptography is, right? So we wouldn't have to hide things if people were all good, right? And so every, if everyone uh, just respected everything, everything would be fine. But obviously, people are trying to read the information, trying to steal money, you know, uh, they use ransomware, right, which has cryptography in it, too. So that's the whole thing. So you want to think of it almost as a cyber battlefield, attackers and defenders, or attack and defense, right? We're not really learning anything about attacks in this course. I mean, basically, I guess some students have done ransomware at the end of the semester as a project. That could be seen as an attack, I suppose. But for the most part, it's all about defense, okay? That's kind of the, the focus. So basically, what is the data battlefield? So digital data, uh, computers, operating systems, programs, networks, the internet, systems of programs communicating over the network, right? So, and the World Wide Web would be the, the biggest example of that. So that's kind of the environment. So what are we actually defending? So understanding the answer will help us to understand what attacks are, how to defend against them, and even help us understand what we really want when we ask for security, right? So we need to start to define these ideas, right? What are we trying to achieve? And this kind of, you know, right now you can just say a whole bunch of words, 
but this should lead into some kind of set of pillars that we have, right? And that's the pillars of information assurance, which is kind of the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and so on. So we are not interested in protecting computers, uh, you know, because you could just put them in a safe and then the computers will, will be you know, protected, right? So what we are trying, what we have is information systems that store, process, and transmit data uh, to different parts of the system in order to provide services, okay? So that's what really what we're trying to maintain is the data and these services that we want to access, right? So here we are. So so we want the following key attributes. So we're you know we're trying to uh, have confidentiality, integrity, availability, non-repudiation, and authentication. So for the, most of the semester, that's what we will be focusing on. Okay. So, you know, sometimes actually I, you know, in the problems, I will say, you know, use block ciphers. Here's a message. Here's the key. I want you to achieve confidentiality. Do you see that? So you have to understand how you use those tools to achieve that specific pillar, or I could just change it and say, no, I want you to achieve authentication. So in RSA, for instance, I can, I can literally give you all the same information tell you to use RSA, but ask you achieve authentication. And so this is sometimes confusing to students because you know one might be obvious, but the other one is not as obvious, okay? So you really wanna understand the goal that you're trying to achieve. Make sense? Okay, but so, so my point is, this is how we have to think about uh, encryption and cryptography, okay? So confidentiality, integrity, availability, non-repudiation and authentication. I'm sure you've covered these topics in another class before, but here I do have some examples just so that we can think about them. And on the exam, I like to, or quizzes and things like that, I will give you a problem, right? And you go into a bank and you open your, sorry, you go into a Starbucks and then you open your computer, go into your um, bank and start looking at your you know, balance. And then somebody stands behind you and looks at the balance. Which of the pillars has been affected there? Integrity, availability, non-repudiation, authentication, or confidentiality? All they did is look. Someone else looked at your balance. So what would you say? Which pillar? First one. Why? <laughs> it's, well, that's confidentiality, right? So you, you kind of have a sense of, of, of confidentiality. It's no one should look at your information without permission. You didn't give them permission to look at you, right? So what if somebody, um, you go into the same uh, Starbucks and then someone has like radio jamming equipment and they turn it on and now your bank no longer works very well. So which of the pillars has been affected in that case? Hmm? Availability, exactly, availability. Do you see that? And so that's kind of the idea, okay? So we will do examples like this and, you know, I'll do general examples, but we're all go we're going to focus on the ones related to cryptography, obviously. Make sense? All right, and I, I can't give you one on authentication right now because it does require us to really start to think about that a little bit more. It's a little bit more complex to grasp uh, initially, okay? But how do you know that, you know, the example I gave before, how do you know that you go to your bank and that is your bank, in fact? You know, how do you know that? How does the browser know when it loads chase.bankofamerica.com? You know, how does it know that that's really bankofamerica.com and not somebody pretending to be Bank of America? Do you see that? So that would be something related to authentication. And cryptography can help you a lot with that. In fact, that's what cryptography does. Okay, you've heard of something like VeriSign. Some of you have heard of VeriSign. Yeah, so we'll learn what VeriSign is. It's, it's, VeriSign is, is a certificate authority and is essential to the internet, like essential, right? And what do they provide? Authentication services via cryptography. That's all they do. Okay, but they're very important. Okay, so anyway, hopefully that makes sense. So um, as you saw in the syllabus, the syllabus said we're going to cover these topics, and now I'm starting with these. You know, uh, uh, the acronym is Siana, I guess. And so we're these are the ones that I will focus on this semester. There may be other ones that you have heard in other classes, 
but for the most part, we will just talk about these. Um, and like I said, usually I'll say, okay, we're looking at this problem and the pillar we're focusing on today or for this problem is integrity, okay? And so we want to understand how that works, okay? You know, all right, good. So the previous uh, attributes, Sienna, are referred to as the pillars of information assurance, okay? So that's really important. So they're not just trivial words, they're actually really important, okay? So, and, and we'll come back to them a lot throughout the semester. Uh, for almost any information system, they describe the fundamental properties that must be maintained, okay? That's what we're trying to achieve. Essentially, these properties are what we want to protect or attack if you're on the other side, right? So if you're an attacker, you want to affect the confidentiality of something, right? Um, something like in a war, right? In a war, there are secret plans, you know, and so people want to see what they're planning, what, you know, what assets they have, you know, you know, do they have enough fuel, bombs, et cetera, right? So all this information, um, yeah. So if, a, you know, IA, information assurance, is the practice of managing risks while maintaining these properties, basically. Uh, malicious human threats are not the only kind also to consider, obviously, for availability, you know, uh, acts of God, animals, et cetera, can also affect them. But here we're just kind of focusing on attacks and defense. All right, so now formally some definitions, right? So uh, we intuitively understand these things, but we, it's good to have some definitions of these pillars. So confidentiality, uh, uh, assurance that information is not disclosed to unauthorized individuals, processes, or devices, okay? So basically that's the definition. Uh, integrity uh, means no unauthorized modification or destruction of information, okay? So it's got to be, you know, you've heard of, you know, the hash number of MD5, right? You download some software sometimes and you see, here's the hash number, right? And so that's what that means is that that software was not tampered with. You know, they haven't added a line of code in there that's malicious in, in some way. Uh, quality of an information system reflecting the logical correctness and reliability of, of that system, the logical completeness, um, and the consistency of, of the stored data or the structures, right? So basically it just hasn't been modified, not even by one bit, all right? So that's what we're gonna study, you know? What if you have a whole movie? Think of a whole movie that you downloaded yesterday or this week, right? We're gonna calculate a hash or something for that whole movie to check the integrity. Now that movie probably has millions of bits, right? But what would happen if just one bit was changed for whatever reason? You know, we're going to study that problem because even if just one bit of that whole thing changes, then you could say that the integrity of it has changed, right? And we want to capture that in some way. And so that's what we're going to study uh, this semester. So that's integrity. Any questions on integrity? Does that make sense? Okay. Availability, we talked about with an example already. It's the timely, reliable access to data and information services for authorized users, right? So we want the system to work, right? When We want that service available. Non-repudiation, uh, assurance that the sender of data is provided with proof of delivery and the recipient is provided with proof of the sender's identity. So this one starts to get into authentication and identity and understanding uh, you know, who sent it, basically. This is really important, okay? Uh, as I said, nowadays, we don't even in trust information, right? We don't trust information, videos, et cetera. What was human generated, what was autom automated, you know, what is real news or, or fake news, things like that. So crypto cryptography is actually probably going to expand in that realm as well. Right? It's one of the solutions that at least it's being looked at. Okay, And so hopefully by the end of the semester, you guys will be able to like think about it and say, and say, tell me if you agree or disagree that you can use it for that purpose. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Um, so non-repudiation, um, 
Yeah, so neither can later deny, yeah, that, you know, a user cannot later deny having, you know, sent data or originated data. And then authentication is a security measure designed to establish the validity of a transmission message or the originator, or a means of verifying an individual's authorization to receive specific categories of information. So think of, you know, what if I, you know, uh, let's say that we're going to do exams and I'm going to send them to you. How do you know that I sent the exam and not someone else? What if someone's playing a prank on you and you get two exams? How do you know which one came from me and one came from your, your friend who's playing a prank on you? Do you see that? So <clears throat> we, need, <clears throat> we need ways of um, actually doing that, okay? So that needs to happen on the internet, okay? So authentication is in the other pillar. All right, so these are the main definitions, okay? Um, so understanding bad stuff in terms of the five pillars. So understanding something as an attack requires understanding which of the five pillars is violated, which property is lost, okay? So that's kind of the idea. So here are some examples just to kind of motivate this a little bit more, okay? So you injected HTML like this, you know, a JavaScript, right? Um, into a simple message board. So the page was always redirected to some other website. Which pillar was violated, right? So here, you know, the answer is provided. So this attack essentially makes the message board impossible to read. If you can't read a board, if you don't have access to it, what does that mean? You lost availability, right? So that's the pillar that's being attacked. Make sense? So my friend is a doofus, right? So we trick users into posting my friend is a doofus on a message board by reducing, by inducing them to click on a bad URL or open a bad HTML email attachment. So this happens when you're logged in, right? And then you go to a post and that post has malicious code. So when you click on that, what's gonna happen is it's going to like grab your, your identity, right? Cause you're signed in, do whatever that, says so maybe post somewhere else with your user so basically right it's like impersonating you okay so in this case which property is violated uh that the victim really cares about so the answer is that in this case we've lost non-repudiation all right so the victim did not insult his friend yet the system shows that he did so that action on the system uh can be repudiated Okay, so so that's basically the idea. Now repudiation. So you you know there there needs to be a way to check identity and know who did what. All right, so that's the example. Any questions on this one? Making sense? Okay. All right. All right. So and that's kind of the the summary you know here of of these slides. Okay. So I wanted to give you a quick uh, introduction to to these pillars. Okay, and just the you know, basic idea. So hopefully that's kind of the motivation and just keep in mind, we're always going to be focusing on, on these. All right, so we can go through these. All right, so now we can talk a little bit about the lab, okay, um, for this week. And then as I said, I'm gonna do the, the short demo of bringing up the virtual machine and just showing you some of the tools that we have available. The goal is that, you know, hopefully today or tomorrow, you'll install this on your machine and then you, you'll repeat what I do today. And that way you know that you're ready for lab on Thursday. Okay, so <clears throat> all you know, uh, all of Thursday will be just the lab going over the pro problems and I will do the demo basically, okay? So what is the lab entail? So this is lab one or our first lab. It is the symmetric encryption technique, okay? So there's basically symmetric and asymmetric encryption. Okay, so asymmetric is the thing that's associated with the terms like RSA or public and private key. Okay, so what that means is in asymmetric, you have two keys, right? We'll see that a little bit later in the semester, like on week three or four. Okay, so that's asymmetric. So in symmetric key, what you want to remember is that we only have one key. Okay, so there's just one key associated with the algorithm. The algorithms, by the way, are not secret. Everyone knows the algorithm, 
Okay, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to say, hey, this is the algorithm for encrypting that Netflix movie. That's it. Code's right there. You know exactly how it works. Yet, even though people, attackers, hackers, whatever you want to call them, know that algorithm, they still cannot decrypt that movie. Why? Because that algorithm works with a key. And if you don't know that key, there's no way that they can decrypt it efficiently at least, or quickly enough. Right. Sometimes what happens a lot in the Internet is that, you know, you establish a connection and that connection will last, let's say, a minute. And in a minute, what's going to happen is the key gets replaced and then you have another minute. So that way, even though the algorithm could be broken in, say, a week, what's the point of that if it's only the key is only used for a minute? So by in, in a second minute, you have another key. So now you'd have to break that one and so on. So. So there's a lot of things that go, go on in cryptography. And so these are the things that we're going to try to understand. But anyway, so just for now, understand that we're going to focus on symmetric encryption, which you can see there. This is when you only have one key. A lot of these algorithms are based on the XOR operation, which I will discuss uh, as we move through the material. Some of the concepts that we will look at are padding, data corruption. And you're going to learn that actually there's several variants of symmetric encryption, right? So symmetric encryption is uses uh, block cipher techniques, block cipher algorithms. So I will describe what that is also. That will require us to get into a little bit of the algorithms and how they work. But this Tuesday, uh, this Thursday, uh, you will learn that there are four modes of operations and you'll play with them, okay? And there's basically like you'll use an algorithm and that algorithm has four variants, okay? which are called ECB, CBC, CFB, OFB. One of the things that we're going to learn is that one of them is actually very insecure, okay? So basically, you know, I don't know if you've heard of DAS and AES and things like that, but those are algorithms, right? Implementations of block ciphers. So there's like the theory of symmetric key encryption. Within that, you have the technique of block ciphers. And within that, you have the implementations of block ciphers, with, such as uh, DES, the data encryption standard, which has been broken already. And then you have AES, which is the advanced encryption standard. OK, and so we're going to get into a little bit of that. And a lot of the AES is still used, right? Um, and so you'll see also, I get this question a lot. There's like Blowfish and Shark, Blue Shark and... Uh, nasty lion and things like that, right? It's a whole bunch of variants of algorithms. What you need to understand is that they're really just different implementations of algorithms such as AES. They have a few optimal approaches, but in general, they're AES or something like that, okay? So there's like the, the you know, people do like the math, uh, you know, the algorithm, they do the math proof of it, and then they just create a standard, right? And the standard is just a document. And then companies like Microsoft, IBM, and things like that will start to implement their own versions. Make sense? And so you'll, you'll have this idea. We'll learn that actually implementing an algorithm is, is hard. And it's not recommended, actually, that you use your own. Even if you're really good at, let's say, at AES, it's not recommended that you implement your own AES algorithm. Instead, you want to use one that has been, you know, tested, that people have tried to break because there is the specification and then there's your implementation, right? And humans, that's software, right? And humans, when they write code, they make mistakes. And that's really what gets exploited sometimes. It's not that the algorithm was weak. The algorithm is pretty strong if you implement it correctly. But people study the software and realize, hmm, th you know, this was not implemented correctly. And so they can exploit that vulnerability. So that could happen to you guys unless you're like really good at implementing encryption algorithms. Does that make sense? So here um, we'll, we'll implement most of these in Python when, when we look at the code. Um, but a, a library such as OpenSSL is very solid, for instance. That's uh, you know, a, a library in uh, Linux, right? And it's a very sol solid library that you can use. Um, you know, so should be secure, I would say. Reasonably secure, how about that? 
All right. So anyway, this is kind of the, the idea of what we will be doing. Uh, and mainly we'll use, uh, you know, in, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll, go, I'll switch to the VM. Um, so we'll focus on symmetric encryption, block ciphers. I think we'll use AES and then we'll just AES, ECB, CBC, CFB, OFB to start to do some encryptions and, you know, encrypt an image, encrypt some text, et cetera. Any question so far, guys? All right. So uh, block ciphers, right? So I'll provide just a brief definition of it. I will. I usually like to use my notes for this. So I'll, I'll go on like the, the electronic whiteboard here and I'll start writing out some ideas. But basically block ciphers uh, use a chaining mode that indicates how to encrypt blocks of plain text. So what that means is the algorithm will take a paragraph or a book or whatever it is, and it's gonna break it into blocks of equal signs. And then once that happens, you know, you're going to start encrypting these blocks in some way. OK, so that's what we're going to learn about. So, for instance, we're going to learn that ECB basically just takes a sentence, breaks it into blocks that say 16 bits. Right. And then just takes a key that is of size 16 bits, bits, XORs them, and that's it. Right. So we're going to explore that technique and we're going to think about it a little. And we're going to see if maybe that's not the best approach. Maybe that has a vulnerability. But how do we find that vulnerability? You see, you see what I'm saying? So a lot of cryptography is that, basically. You want to make sure that your algorithm is secure. So what do you have to do? You have to try to break it, right? So that, that's the whole point. So a lot of these algorithms um, started in the 70s, started, you know, back then, and for They've been open. It's like open source in a sense, right? Because all you have to keep secret is the key. So the algorithms have been available for many years and people just have conferences, competitions, et cetera. There's prices and people just try to break them constantly. You know, they go in, you know, they try to break them. And some of the, the like desk was broken. I think in the slides at some point I have the date when it was broken, but other algorithms haven't. At least we don't know that they, they've been broken. It's possible that some government agency has broken them and they're not going to tell you, obviously, because that would be that's their advantage. Right. But, it, it you know, but that's the, the basic idea. So block ciphers use a chaining uh, mode that indicates how to encrypt blocks of plain text. M1, M2, all the way to MM. Right. So we're going to break it up into blocks. Uh, if if the last block doesn't have enough letters, to then we're just going to pad it, basically. And we're going to look at that. And of course, we have to understand how to reverse the process to obtain plain text from the cipher text. And you can see here's the terminology. So this is one thing that we will implement like in, in code and in Python. We will basically take sentences, break them up into blocks and encrypt and decrypt. That's not DES or AES, right? That's just us doing a block cipher encryption, right? But we're going to start to understand that uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks. And then uh, we're going to explore the, the data encryption standard and how that works. And you'll see it's a lot of, a lot of moving of bits around, OK? And then once you see this, you'll be like, nah, let's not look at AES because <laughs> it gets even harder, OK? And then actually RSA, we're going to look at it, and it's different from this. And it's like. It's math, but it's like very nice. I think you'll you'll like that. Like the the ideas are simple, and yet it's amazing that uh, you get so much security out of those ideas. Okay, so anyway, we'll we'll explore that later. But we'll start here with block ciphers. The modes of operation. I usually like to introduce this because then students are just typing commands on 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 the terminal and they, they type ECB or CBC and it just looks like a whole bunch of letters. So that's the thing with cryptography, right? Everything is going to be bits, hexadecimal, decimal, strange characters, right? So you'll see way, a lot of letters that you think don't mean anything, but actually they do. So I, in particular these, I want you to pay attention to, okay? So when you see the commands, look for ECB, CBC, CFB, OFB. Okay, those are the different modes of operation that we have available. So ECB stands for Electronic Codebook. 
you know, I'll, I'll give you the, the secret here of, of the lab. And, and basically we're going to see that ECB is actually insecure. You have to prove that in the lab. And you'll, and there's a nice example that we will do with the image that will like immediately show you how insecure it is. Okay. And so you would think you, you, you might be, somebody might confuse you because they say, oh yeah, let's use AES. AES is secure, right? And you're like, sure. Let's use AES ECB. And you'll, you might be like, okay. And you don't realize that even though it seems it's AES, it's using ECB, the electronic codebook uh, mode chaining approach. And that's actually really insecure. You can see information. Now that's the other thing that we need to do also at some point more formally is define what is actually, what does it mean to actually be insecure? Or what does secure mean? You know what I mean? We need to provide that. Some definition. That definition actually was created by Claude Shannon. So the father of information theory. So we're going to look at Claude Shannon's definition. What does it actually mean to have a secure cipher? We need to be able to measure that in some way, right? That's the key thing, right? And he actually proposed how to do it. All right, then we have other operations. Oh, yeah. So electronic code would basically the plain text is split into blocks and the blocks are encrypted independently. And that's the key, all right, that you need to understand why that might be insecure. And then people then provided other solutions such as cipher block chaining, CBC, okay? So the plain text here is split into blocks and each block is XOR. Remember XOR is that truth table XOR operation. We'll do some examples of that a little later in the semester or next week, maybe. So each block is XORed with the previous block to get the cipher text block. Do you see how they're different now, right? In one, they were independent. In the other one, they are there. XOR is being used everywhere, but in one, they, it was XORed independently with the key. And in the other one, it is. Um, each block is XORed with the previous block to get the cipher text block, okay? So we that's the whole point of this course, right? To understand these kinds of things. So we'll look at, you know, how we implement this in Python. We're gonna look also when we run this with OpenSSL as a command in Linux, what does that look like, okay? And so basically that's the approach. And at the end of the day, we're always gonna have some text file or some image, and we're just trying to create the cipher version of it, okay? Any questions so far? All right, great. Uh, then we have the other two cipher uh, feedback. So similar to CB CBC, but different algorithm. Because remember, a lot, this whole course is just algorithm. So somebody just came up with some sequence of steps with math in it, and that's basically an algorithm. An input goes in, and you get an output, okay? Which is the encrypted version of the input. And then we're going to learn something called the OFB is output feedback, and that's based on stream cipher approaches. So that's another type of a technique. We will talk about that a little later, right? So I, I you know, that requires its own like lecture. Okay, so we'll we'll talk about that. But anyway, this is important that you remember these modes, this these uh, modes of operation or chaining modes, as they are variants that you can use when you're using AES or DES, etc. Right. right. Also, the IV or the initialization vector, we're going to learn about this. Uh, you know, that's also another parameter that you will see in the lab, and you might ignore it, or you might not, you know, under, you know, know that you're even using it because the commands can be a little bit long on the terminal. But just please remember this one. Make a note of it because it's important. You know, the initialization vector uh, is is needed. And so you want to understand why it's needed, right? So we're going to provide here a definition. It's a block of bits that is used by several modes to randomize the encryption and hence produce distinct ciphered text, okay? So it's a block of bits. Everything is going to be a block of bits. You know, you're, so we're going to think in terms of, all right, a block of 16 bits or a block of 32 bits, right? And then that's zeros and ones and they need to be random, right? So that actually, then that brings in randomness, right? That's another important concept 
uh, in cryptography, right? So you want the key to be random. And we're gonna we're gonna try to understand. So why do we need things to be random, right? So what's you know what's the importance of it? Okay, all right. So so we'll look at that later. All right, so that's the slides basically. So this completes the the first set of slides for today. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll just go on the virtual machine, just kind of show you uh, the you know what the environment looks like in, in case you've never looked at the CBM or anything like that. Um, I'll give you the instructions for this. Okay. So let me, okay. And so I provided, um, so, okay. So now we are switching gears to the virtual machine, right? So I remind you that I gave you this um, in resources, right? I gave you this document. Okay, so follow that document, please, to create your virtual machine. You don't actually download a, a working virtual machine. You download like a disk, and then you have to create the VM from it. So follow these instructions. Um, I do have some uh, additional links that I'll, I need to provide here for troubleshooting. Sometimes in this course or, or my other courses, there's little issues here and there so i provided like descriptions for a lot of the like a you know fact right so in case you have questions or, an, or ran into an error how to how to fix it so i'll provide one additional link here all right also the seed labs i provided this link this is important because this is where you can get the virtual machine right so um All right, so I guess if you guys, any of you have M1, M2 chips, right, on your Mac, follow those instructions. Um, this is for in Intel AMD, follow these instructions. We are still using uh, Ubuntu 2004, so the machine has not been updated yet. Uh, it usually gets updated every uh, four years or so, so it, it's due for an update soon. But for now, we're still using 2004, so follow these instructions to download uh, the information, okay? And like I said, I'll provide a few more links, et cetera. But you should be able to download it from there. Got it? Okay. So I've already done, we all also, by the way, I think we only need one VM for this class. I know in other classes, sometimes you have to have two for, but most of what we're, we're doing, you're working with a partner, right? So really that's how it works. You're gonna be sending information, the keys, et cetera. All right, and we're gonna think of some of the problems. You know, key exchange, for instance, is a problem that needs to be addressed, which is independent from the actual uh, confidentiality problem. All right, so I've shown this. So now I'm gonna go to uh, my virtual machine. So um, see if you notice, I already have a uh, virtual box. Okay. So this is the VM, I've already loaded it. So usually I'll select, you know, like 2004, I'll hit start. And then, so you need to do all the installation and be able to get to this machine. So while it's doing this, so what you have to do for the homework basically um, is once you complete your homework, you need to create a report. Okay, so usually that's all I ask you. I'm not. I usually don't ask you for like the code or anything. I mean, I, I gave you the code, right? For the most part. So what I'm looking for is evidence that you've completed the problem, that you understood basically the problem that you were doing. I can tell actually when I look at your answers if you understood the problem or not. 
okay? Because you'll give me, you don't need to give me 15 screenshots. You can just give me like that one that has the, the actual answer. Does that make sense? So I can't really say I need 15 screenshots or one, right? It's basically whatever, if you understood the problem, you should be able to figure out what you need to provide. Definitely ask me, right? And I'll give you feedback, but I'm just saying that's kind of how it is. I am just looking for evidence that you did it correctly. So there will be a problem and then you'll show me, you know, the, the screenshot of you doing it, maybe provide at most three sentences summarizing your answer. That also helps me out a lot. You, you say, I see the screenshot, you kind of say, oh, I did the thing that I was supposed to do. Here it is. And, you know, that's it. So that's how uh, the homework works, okay? One report in Word or PDF, whatever you want. You know, each of the problems usually will be like five problems, screenshot, and a summary sentence. Make sense? All right. So, so <clears throat> here I am. So uh, usually the default account is <laughs> seed. And then the password is the in reverse. So D's. So D E E S. Give it a minute. All right, so that's the virtual machine. So this is what we will be using all semester, okay? We'll be using the uh, the terminal. Show of hands if you've used Linux before. <laughs> all right, so most of you have, right? So yeah, so uh, if you have questions, of, you know, if you've never used Linux for whatever reason, don't worry about it. It's pretty straightforward. You'll just kind of, you'll see me, I always demo everything. So you'll see my demos and you'll pick it up, okay? Um, but anyway, so you can see I have a lot of files here already. Um, I usually just create a new folder, like I call it fall 2024, 350, and then I'll start creating um, things there. So like, like this actually. So I recommend you do the same so you don't lose your files. Uh, so new folder. Um, ITS 350 for 2024. Okay, and so where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's my folder, right? And then basically I suggest that you always put your files in that folder. Don't, you know, don't lose your files, things like that. So I will, we'll be using the terminal for pretty much everything. So you can open the terminal there. So, you know, this is what I suggest you do. Um, you know, install the machine and then kind of repeat these exercises and you'll be ready to start. So Ella, you know, I'll give you a very quick, a uh, reminder here of how to navigate, right? So you want to look at the files, you type ls or ls-l, so that shows you where you are. Another way of knowing where you are is to type pwd, it gives you the full path, okay? Then you want to get to the desktop, so you can do cd desktop, tab to autocomplete. So I go in there, clear. All this is being recorded, so you can just Watch it again a little bit later. And then now, again, ls-l. You can see that, right? These are the folders in the desktop. PWD, you see it's changed now. Okay. Clear, get rid of them. If I want to go back for whatever reason, cd dot dot. That just means go back to the parent directory. PWD, right? Go back in again, cd desktop, tab for autocomplete clear ls-l. Now I want to go to my folder where I'm going to have all my files. So then I'm going to do cd its. It's case sensitive. Don't forget that. 350 tab. Well, apparently I gave it three L's. All right. All right. I'm just going to leave. All right. So ls-l. Right. I have no files in there and that's going to be my folder for the semester. So everything we do, we'll, we'll do in, in, in your folder, right? 
you know, you'll have your information there uh, and then just take your screenshots as needed. Does that make sense? So the very first set of exercises we'll need to do, we'll need to open a bright space on this computer, on the actual uh, VM and download the files in here, right? So we need to download the image and so on. Um, and then we'll create uh, an example. So we'll do like, um, you'll need to create files. So I'll show you various ways. I usually like to use nano. And so we're gonna do um, nano, you know, message, or you can call it plain if you wanna follow the, um, the terminology in cryptography. So this would be the plain text. So you know, it's not encrypted. So then you'll say something this, this uh, is a secret message. Do you see that? So that's basically what we will be doing all semester. You create a plain text message, and now we need to create the cipher of it. And that's going to be become a binary file usually, right? So you know the format is going to change. So now with nano, you do control X, Y, enter and I've created my file. So I have that plain text. Things that are going to be important to always look at are the permissions. Um, and we're not gonna be changing the permissions, so you should have access to everything, but, and also the size of the file, right? So the size of the file should be this, 26 bytes, because today is August 20th. So yeah, so that's the size of it. All right, and we're gonna have to pay attention to that, you know, like maybe the cipher that you create based on some algorithms, um, it's gonna be a little bit bigger. Like it might be instead of 26, it might be 30 or 32. And you have to ask yourself why, right? So everything is usually multiples of eight, so one byte, right? And if then if the original was 26, but the the, produce cipher files 32, that's probably because there was some kind of padding or something like that. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so this is what we will uh, be doing. Um, it should be open SSL. And that's the program that we're gonna be using, open SSL for the first few examples. So this week, okay? So that's in the PDF, so I'll leave that for uh, Thursday where I will start, I'll, I will basically pick up from here on Thursday and we're just gonna start encrypting, okay? So if you want, it, if you, want you can already start reading uh, the PDF, but remember, you don't have to solve the PDF, you only solve the problems that I assign, but the PDF is very useful because, um, where is it, here. <clears throat> so we can go back to table of contents and I'll show you now what I mean because it's going to have all the commands and, and everything. So I'm going to, and we'll finish with that in a second. So, so this class is going to end at 540 every day, right? So we're going to end at 540. All right. So let's take a look. Sorry. I don't mean to do that. All right. Um, here. So the document that you want to start reading through is this one, crypto encryption. So it gives a little bit of the background. So I'll go over all of this on Thursday, kind of motivate um, you know, the environment. That's what you guys are, are getting going. We're not gonna use Docker. We, we don't need to use Docker. So you can read that part, but we don't need to use these commands. Uh, and then we have some exam thing, you know, examples that we could do like this one, frequency analysis, uh, just looking at the frequency, the occurrence of letters you know, in, in, in sentences and paragraphs. Um, so that's, it talks about that, but really we're gonna focus on task two, right? So we'll start here and you can see, here's your very first command, encryption using different ciphers and modes, okay? So this is the first thing I will demo on two, Thursday. So as you can see, I will, this basically when you see this dollar sign, that just means we're on the terminal, right? The command line and I'm gonna type a command, okay? So open SSL, and then there's gonna be a whole bunch of parameters as you can see here. Notice the input is plain.txt, that's that file I just created. The output is gonna be cipher bin, that's gonna be your encrypted file. So if you're working with a partner, that's what you send to them, okay? And then they have to decrypt it. 
And then this dash K notice is a whole as a sequence of numbers and letters, which is meant to be the key. Do you think that's a good key? Why not? Order. It's got a pattern, right? <laughs> and things should not have patterns. So that's one of the things with cryptography that we want to learn, right? So everything should look like random noise. That's what we want to create. If you have a, a, a cipher that creates patterns, it's really bad, right? Because you can break it. But we're going to more formally discuss that. Notice it's got this term, the IV, and that, um, you know, I gave you a definition for it. So anyway, this will be the first example that we will, we will do on Thursday, okay? And this is part of your lab, and then there's additional things to do. Does that make sense? All right, guys, uh, I'll stay for a few minutes if you have any questions. Otherwise, that's basically the motivation for the class. I'll stop here. The introduction.